Welcome to NTR Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Health engages the minibus sector on best practices for COVID-19 prevention. Caribbean countries urge to participate in COVID-19 vaccine trials. And exploring alternative pathways for common entrance students who scored below the national mean. As St. Lucia moves into the final stages of reopening the local economy, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has been engaging minibus operators in a dialogue on the best practices and behaviors to prevent the spread of COVID-19. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. As part of reinforcing health protocols for COVID-19 on public transportation, the Ministry of Health and Wellness recently convened a meeting with bus drivers around the island. The bus drivers were provided with guidance for decreasing the risk of passengers and themselves contracting COVID-19. Chief Environmental Health Officer Paco Ragnanan spoke on the protocols expected for public transportation. The protocols are, are not very strenuous, but they are important. So we talk about one, um, the wearing of masks, both the drivers and the passengers are expected to continue to wear face masks. The issue of hand sanitizing, and uh, it is important for provision to be made to allow for adequate sanitizers to be available for hand sanitizing, as well as uh, to maintain some physical distance on the vehicle. We think that is important um, to allow for space between passengers as well as to looking at the procedure and the protocols for cleaning and decontaminating a bus. Ragnanan says the discussion with the bus drivers was quite engaging. The transport sector is looking at whether there is a possibility for increasing the number of passengers that they presently can have on a vehicle. That discussion is ongoing and uh, no decision was taken on that matter at that meeting. We need to be very careful um, in terms of looking at public health and public health measures and uh, we are adamant that uh, these measures must, must be adhered to um, notwithstanding uh, other arrangements that individuals would like to make. So we, we continue to emphasize the needs for uh, protocols and adherence to these protocols. As it stands right now, up to 10 people are permitted to be on a public transport. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Meantime, countries in the Americas are pooling their efforts to ensure access to treatments and vaccines for COVID-19. Director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says as the global scientific community intensifies efforts at finding a vaccine, it is critical that the region ensures equal access to the life-saving tools when they become available. The last few months have ushered unprecedented collaboration among scientists, governments, and global partners to develop coronavirus treatments and vaccines in record time. Today, there are more than 150 vaccine candidates in the pipeline, and, and more than 20 of these are already being tested on volunteers with active participation of countries in our region, such as the United States of America, Canada, Brazil, and Argentina. It is important that Latin America and the Caribbean join these clinical trials so we can participate in this global effort to accelerate the development of vaccines that are safe and effective for everyone. However, countries should only participate if it is done right with the adoption of proper regulatory, technical and ethical measures. Dr. Etienne said that the PAHO revolving fund for vaccines can be used as a strategic asset to buy and distribute vaccines for COVID-19 when they become available. PAHO is also involved in the WHO COVAX facility, a group effort to negotiate with vaccine producers. 20 of the 150 current vaccine candidates are already being tested on volunteers. The COVAX facility 
is grounded in the same principles of our revolving fund, shared resources and equitable access at affordable prices. The facility will negotiate on behalf of many countries worldwide with the producers of all promising COVID-19 vaccine candidates. This will enable countries regardless of their income level to secure better prices and assume less risk than if they negotiate individually. No country should do this alone, especially since we improve our chances of success and reduce competition if we work together. The COVAX facility is the best option to guarantee equitable access through fair allocation across countries and to reduce the risk of having no supply if a specific vaccine candidate fails. The PAHO director says the region must now plan on how it will select, manufacture, pay for and distribute a COVID-19 vaccine. There is need, Dr. Etienne noted, for the region to improve its regulatory capacities on immunization, post-marketing surveillance and boost vaccine programs. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has alerted parents, students and teachers to the alternative pathways for common entrance examination students who performed below the national mean. 45% of the common entrance candidates failed to do so. Chief Education Officer Fiona Meyer has indicated for overall improvements this year, not every child was successful. In keeping with the department's ethos of no child left behind, the chief education officer indicated that there are other pathways which can lead to student success. Policy documentation over the last 30 years has made provisions for children up to the age of 13 by the 1st of September of the academic year to have an additional opportunity to sit the common entrance examination in the following year. This is done in collaboration with the school's principal and is based on the space requirements at the school. The Department of Education explained that it is important that parents speak to school administrators and look at the various options available. The Department of Education in its total wisdom has seen it fit to invest in the care program. And in that regard has made facilities and resources available so that students whose parents want to engage us for the office of the chief education officer can make provisions for their children's education. And in particular, we applaud the care program for the soft skills, the improvement in literacy and numeracy skills that so many of our students desperately need and they have been able to provide. The important point to note is that there is a reintegration of students when after a year that they've completed care, they are given opportunities to come back into the secondary school setting as per discussions with you know, the chief education officer through that office and with the various principals of the secondary schools. In September 2019, the Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education, CARE, in partnership with the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, offered places to students who performed below 30% in last year's common entrance examination. These students were admitted into the Junior Life Program, JLP, with the option of reintegrating into a secondary school upon completion of the JLP or continuing into the Adolescent Development Program at CARE. The Chief Education Officer added that important factors in student success are parental involvement, support and monitoring. That way, where necessary, there can be early intervention. And likewise, as educators, we must focus on early intervention as early as kindergarten, as early as grade one, grade two, to note where the deficiencies lie with our children and how best we can support them. It is not about simply putting them through the primary school and being a, getting access to higher education at the secondary school level, but it's about ensuring that they have the skills in order to do so. As I conclude, I will say to you, colleagues, our parents, the general populace. As adults, we must lead by example. We must lead by example in our words and our deeds. 
We have to speak positivity into our children. We have to affirm them. We have to value them. We have to point to improvements that they've done. And as you get the results, dear parents, note that our children are watching us intently as to our reactions. It is a time to hug your child and to really give them the impetus to continue to improve upon whatever they've started. Parents of students who attained a grade of 30% or less are encouraged to consider care as a pathway for their child. Interested parents should contact the school supervision unit at 468-5261 or email at ceosecretary at education.gov.lc. Government's decision to rebrand the St. Lucia Marketing Board is bearing fruit and proved sound as the Ministry of Agriculture assists farmers in mitigating the effects of COVID-19. Here's Anisia Antoine. The government of St. Lucia made a critical decision to restructure and revise the scope of the St. Lucia Marketing Board. One of the major thrusts of the newly structured board will be the facilitation of exports as well as ensuring a more effective structure of farmer production and marketing to meet local, regional and international standards. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, Physical Planning and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, explained the rationale behind rebranding and reshaping the marketing board at this time. What we were told when we went around before COVID planning for the seven crop program, right. right, that a number of the hoteliers were telling us, look, the reason why we are engaging small farmers directly because of reliability. Okay. Now the underground the challenge is that these small farmers on their own cannot on a sustainable basis supply the hotels. the hotels. What's also happening is that you find they are undercutting each other. Yes. All right? And also the challenge, one of the challenges they had was the question of a timely payment. Yeah. We can say that since we have commenced restructuring the Senusha Marketing Board, we have not, and I'm happy to say that, that as minister responsible, I have not been, have the unfortunate responsibility mm. to go to the Minister of Finance to ask for a bill for the Central Market Board. Which is very good. Right? The Central Market Board is holding on its own. It's paying on farmers on a timely basis. Barima Felicia, Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, Physical Planning and Cooperatives, stressed on the importance of having an effective marketing body in creating and maintaining the demand for the goods produced by local farmers. We had a meeting with, with the marketing board mm -hmm. and uh, it's about the rebranding and, and restructuring of marketing Very board good. to arrive at a suitable name and a suitable strategy to ensure that the marketing board gets the recognition that it needs. Mm -hmm. But as far as the, the access by farmers to the marketing board, during COVID you've seen a resurgence of the visibility of the marketing board. Farmers came to the local market, came to the marketing board and the marketing board served as that hub that was always envisaged by the Department of Agriculture and the government of St. Lucia. So they were able to access that island-wide network that they have of food mm -hmm. and redistribute to the persons that required it for their retail and for their other, other sources. So farmers were able to get an income in a time where hotels were closed, restaurants were closed from the marketing board during that period. Mm -hmm. So they served as well during COVID-19 and we want to ensure that the marketing board remains a strong institution to continue serving as well. The permanent secretary explained that under the newly restructured marketing entity, a pack house will be created. So a pack house is an area where you receive food, you clean it, sanitize it, package it and distribute it. The difference with this pack house is that it is going to be HACCP certified. Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point, which is an international food safety standard mm -hmm. that you have to achieve if you want to export. So that pack house will serve as the hub. You'll be able to package and redistribute, redistribute food. There will be a, a, a small lab for quick testing of chemical residue to ensure food safety. So that will be a, a hub, an easy redistribution center that farmers can access through the marketing, through, man through the management of the entity. and. Once that is in place, then we will see the, re the resurgence of a strong, market, strong marketing of local produce locally, uh, regionally and internationally. 
The Ministry of Agriculture officials reaffirmed the government of St. Lucia's commitment to supporting and assisting farmers. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The emergence of new airlines has served to assure Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chatney of the viability of the regional air travel as Liat faces turbulence. The regional carrier is on the brink of liquidation due to substantial financial losses. Liat suffered an EC $12 million loss in 2019. Into 2020, months of losses due to coronavirus measures was the last straw compromising its operations. The government of Antigua and Barbuda, a shareholder of LIAT, has indicated that a new entity called LIAT 2020 will be formed. Honorable Chastney believes that the liquidation of LIAT is creating new impetus in the Caribbean aviation industry. Those persons who had said, oh, there's nothing to replace LIAT, six airlines have stepped up. I think the important part is that um, I'm very, very happy that the other islands now have agreed to lower their interregional taxes. So St. Lucia, when we introduced our new tax, created a two-tier system where we charge $98 for international travel and $60 for interregional travel. Um, and we've always indicated that if um, the other countries are prepared to lower it and have a common tax, we're prepared to do so. So I'm hearing things like 35 or 30 or $20. So that's very exciting. Prime Minister Shastny says existing carriers have expressed interest in expanding their operations. Also encouraging is the cost reduction on the number of flights. We're seeing airfares of $99 um, to fly to Barbados, Dominica, um, Grenada, St. Vincent, um, and I think as far as, 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 as Tortola. Uh, Inter-Caribbean is also looking to expand in the region. Um, SVG is going to be looking to expand. Um, there's a local company here um, uh, with St. Lucia helicopters that are looking to get into um, new equipment to expand. Uh, Air, uh, what's it called? Caribbean Airlines and Air Antilles all have expressed interest in terms of expanding routes in between the regions. Liat has an overall debt of 100 million EC dollars. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of Wayall. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci au temps général. Monsieur, Madame, Département, qui nous responsabilité pour l'information en gouvernement cette ci à CGIS, et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui nouvelle à Créole. Présente au Primus Hutchinson. Ministre des Affaires d'Éducation, et qui nous responsabilité aussi pour des affaires relations femmes et hommes à cette ci on est Dr. Gil Rigobert, très distrué. Concerné un incident qui est fait dimanche le 12 juillet à bord de la mer Pigeon Island, côté une jeune fille trouvée la mort. Le ministre Rigobo dit que ça a porté un pile la peine, que la qualité de violence qu'on a fait à résultat des relations sexuelles entre femmes et hommes. Si vous avez des relations toujours, eh bien, vous avez des relations. Selon le docteur Rigobo, le système que nous avons suivi avec la vie va être un genre de façon qui n'est pas égal et que ça a posé un événement qui n'est pas, pas raisonnable et qui n'est pas justifié. Mais cela a ajouté que c'est une situation qui longtemps avant que l'on soit tombé à ce système système qui a l'occasion de sa fête parce qu'il n'est pas cordial. Pour raison ça, le monde qui a souffert et puis abusement, qui a vécu et puis trois casements, il n'a pas parlé de ça. Alors, bien souvent, le côté ça est invisible pour le peuple qui est le Dr. Rigobert dit aussi, 
Malgré la journée étude et recherche que j'ai faite, côté des versets que j'ai souffert, te parler à sous la peine ça là, cette le cycle a continué pour souffrir à bas abusement, principalement à l'avantage qui nomme capoué à sous femme. C'est une situation qui bien fond et accourue en culture pays là, qui pas justifié en pièce face au gouvernement. Ministre Gabriel tu peux qui ministre là qui a vu qui département qui responsable pour la sur femme et homme, j'ai fait autant pour régler et soulager la situation, et que j'ai aussi travaillé très près et puis les autres agences et les autres organisations internationales pour continuer à faire assessment et pour être au courant concernant la situation. Et l'initiative là, qui a embrassé diverses démarches pour corriger la violence domestique à cette ci La journée législation, c'était assistance qui est en place, éducation publique et une augmentation des ressources qui est available pour le public là, généralement. Alors, le ministre Gobert a fait un appel très fort pour les autorités à renforcer et établir la législation neuf pour adresser sérieusement ces situations de violence à ce femme pays. Directeur pour le département de relations femmes et de Mlle Jani Joseph, a aussi crié pour tout le monde coopérer ensemble avec Nili et le ministre Kamade pour toute organisation avec les citoyens, particulièrement les médias pays, pour travailler près et puis un effort pour abattre la violence domestique. Mardi le 14 juillet, cette ci enregistré un cas positif de maladie corona. Individu A, c'est un homme 27 l'année de l'âge qui a été retourné cette ci et trouvé testé et était en quarantaine après avoir reçu le résultat de la Il était né pour trois pays à l'hôpital pour traitement. Présentement, il a fait assez bien et parce que ces règles là très haut à ces institutions ça là on veut cela pour ni travailler et monde qui en quarantaine et aussi ça aussi très bas comme pays a ca entrer en 16e phase pour vivre ouvert be ba pays là les autorités ca en pays qui la paix ni temps en temps ca comme ça pour ni les touristes et les citoyens qui ca retourner cette ici alors le département santé ca conseille pour encourager public là pour continuer pour suivre tout protocole comme servir masque, laver la main, servir sanitizer, etc. Le ministère de la Santé a fait un grand appel pour ni les pays et les gens qui ont visité pour respecter ces règles et suivre ces protocoles qui sont en place. Le ministère de la Santé a collaboré et puis le ministère des Affaires touristiques pour renforcer ces règles, particulièrement pour les étrangers et les public là pour coopérer et encourager la famille et les amis qui ont retourné dans pays cette ci présentement. Il est présentement en quarantaine pour rester en caille pour 14 jours. Non, tout ce monde qui est en quarantaine, il est trouvé en code garde police pour qui l'année de compliance. Et le public là, ça téléphone 468-5349-468-5342-468-5312. Si on a des informations concernant les gens qui ne peuvent pas suivre ces protocoles, ça là. Particulièrement, Particulier, yo qui était en leur pays. Les hôtels qui ont compliance et puis protocole concernant les maladies de corona pour les étrangers qui ont visité cette ci comme pays a ouvert à à présent, j'ai organisé divers étonnements pour travailler yo pour savoir qui manière pour agir et puis ces touristes-là, à ces hôtels-là, et aussi ça ces touristes-là méritent fait depuis yo arrivé à ces hôtels-là. Durant la discussion à ce NTN, un grec à l'hôtel Begardens, Mme Walter Patrick, a expliqué la qualité du programme qui est en place pour les touristes qui sont restés à l'hôtel Salah. Le premier gars qui est arrivé, il est arrivé, un premier bagage pour sanitiser. Après le sanitaire, il y a la température. Mm -hmm. Après la température, il y a la calé. Nous n'avons pas de papier et puis la clé pour nous écrire encore. Il y a la fait tout le bagage sur le computer. Ok. La clé a. Nous avons sanitisé les deux vents de gaz là, il y a un petit peu de gaz là qui a massé et puis qui a l'air jamais. Nous avons une conversation et puis de gaz là pour réfléchir et puis pour. Remind, how do you say remind? Faire changer. Faire changer. That holiday, il y a un petit peu de un resort là et puis nous avons dit tout service. Nous sommes un resort là et puis nous avons pour commander le ministre du Tourisme pour ajouter. Entertainment. Mm. Puisque ouais. ou pas ça en vacances 
et puis on, on y mange, on y boit, on y poule, et pour passer à mes écoles. C'est le madame Patrick, hôtel là, café, ces gars là, changer tous les jours. C'est faux, ils suivent tout le protocole pour protéger l'hôtel là, les travailler avec eux-mêmes. Ceux-là, pour mettre les masques, ils ont marché en trois petits. Là, ils ont aller manger, nous savons pas ça manger, et puis masque là, ce qu'ils ont tiré. Et puis, um, nous nou prenons un chèque de et peut-être quatre. Quatre mm -hmm. premiers jours. Mm -hmm. Et puis, je vais parler de parce qu'ils innovent, ils nous vont. Donc, je vais faire un chaitan le bon matin, marcher à un restaurant, parler de ces gens-là. Vous savez, pour vous expliquer, je vais vous expliquer de qui vous avez senti. Représentatif pour Hotel Sandals, Mamzelle Judy de Teville, aussi est présent. Et vous répétez en même façon Hotel Sandals qui a conduit l'opération pour les et travailler. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour vous autre nouvelle à Creole. Après ça, je vous remercie pour vous autre journal. Merci, Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville. Thank you.